We've decided to hit the beach. No way. How can you make such a mess of it? Gotta be King Arthur to get these out. I just found out John's secret. Bacon sarnies, delicious coffee. What have you done? Also, no bare-chested working. We decided to hit the beach. We finished early because we've done an EV charging point install in one hour. Yes, that's right. We've done a whole day's work in one hour. It's not, not quite right though, is it, mate? Well, there might have been a few hiccups along the way. We've been working just a few hundred meters from here. So let's wind back the clock, zoom out, and let me explain. Oh my goodness. That is the most melty ice cream I've ever had. So here's today's challenge. Can we install a Hypervolt electric vehicle charging point in one hour with a team of three people? Let's split up the tasks and see how well we do. So John, if you can get the Hypervolt on the wall, charger mounted, Ruben, cable route, Get it in, get it clipped up. I'm gonna do the board end. Let's go. So the customer wants the car charger mounted here and he wants it as low as possible. He's gonna add a few more stones. So we're gonna clip it as low as possible along here. The only tricky bit, we've got a step in the way here, which we'll have to just navigate and it's getting through here. So we're thinking of drilling at an angle through both ways to pass the cable through and then along and up into the consumer unit. You've got to be King Arthur to get these out. <laughs> Did it go through that? It's formula, isn't it? I don't know, I'll just put the bigger yeah, one through. So we've got a brand new fuse box consumer unit here, which is great. So we can just add a new circuit in here. So we're going to be adding a new 32 amp double pole mini RCBO in here to protect the circuit. I'm going to whip the cover off and see what it's like inside. Let me know in the comments, guys, what do you think? Is it going to be neat or is it going to be the opposite of neat? Have you seen the spaces on it? Right. One, two, three. Oh, yeah, okay. Disappointing, unfortunately. I don't think I could do that messy a job of it if I, could, if I tried. Like, it's brand new cabling. How can you make such a mess of it? I just don't get it. Anyway, we'll work with what we've got. It is like Spaghetti Junction here and you've got a load of exposed tails and everything. And you can see they've kind of slashed the uh, inner insulation there when they've been cutting the tails as well, which is not great. Too much copper showing. Copper showing on a lot of these, so we'll re-terminate those. I mean, I'm half tempted to just redo the whole thing. <laughs> but we won't be able to do that in an hour. So uh, let's see what we can do an hour and get this um, cable in. Ruben, stop, stop, stop. You're doing, like, you're, you're taking way too long doing this. Like, what you need is one of these, right? Oh, yeah. yeah, this is how true artisans do their work. I bought you this from a very special place. I'll leave a little video up here where you can see my little car boot sale sessions that I've been doing. This is a proper Stanley hand drill. This is how they used to do it in the old days, right? Mm. So, I don't know if you can even fit an SDS in it. But you unwind that, you pop your drill bit in, and then start cranking. Start cranking. Do you want to have a go? I bet it. Oh, just, yeah. Maybe. Maybe not. No, it won't quite fit. Have you got? Oh, yes, look at this. Trust John to have. Oh, God. Oh, sorry. It's a, bit. it's a broken one. It's fine. Is that the same size? More or less. Oh, it won't even fit that. <laughs> Did you ever used to work with one of these, John? <laughs> not that old. <laughs> it's not bad. Not bad at all. 
you never know. <laughs> safety, safety first. So I think this is a bit of a dud on this job. We might have to save it for more bespoke kind of work. But I did pick up this from the car boot sale, which is a rubber hammer. And this will be perfect for hammering in those linear clips without uh, damaging the paint on them. Yeah. So when you hammer them in, give that a go, see how you get on with it. These other RCBOs, these last two, were not even clicked into the buzz bar properly. These little clips that go behind, were just down, so they weren't even secure onto the bus on the bus bar. Yeah, just just twisting them together like that to pull them through. Yeah, beautiful. It's an unbreakable joint. You can't break that. I bet you. In fact, I will bet you any money you can't break that joint. <laughs> <laughs> the cable broke, not yeah. the joint. <laughs> you can't break it. Yeah. No, it is. Uh, that is the way. That is the way forward. Like, so many guys, they just like twist them together loosely or something and they think, oh, it'll be all right. And then they pull it and it, it comes off. Just want to get this end through because it's a bit of a, I'm not sure if I need to go a bit bigger on that hole or not. Maybe. Should I go one size up on the drill, do you think? Yeah, um, I think try and go slightly flatter to the wall. That. Yeah, no, I feel like it's, it's going to scut it up. Tight. Yeah, exactly. Now here's a dilemma for you guys. What would you do? Would you go around this step or would you try and artisan tunnel drill through the corner here all the way along the back and just go in a straight line all the way along the back? Now I think we don't want to risk going through the back on this because quite likely these slabs and, and bricks will just break away from the wall if we try and do that. So we're gonna go around, but let me know in the comments if you'd do it differently. So I've just put this new 32 amp RCBO in here. It's a miniature RCBO. Fusebox make the double pole type A mini RCBOs, which are really handy. So this is the exact protection that we need for our charging point. I'm just gonna get this all connected up and prepared. And then I'm gonna drill a hole in the side of the board here, put a compression gland in so that we can take the cable into the board in the side, because then we can neatly run the cable along here, down next to this trunking and out. By the way, while I'm talking about this, this is a good chance to talk about today's video sponsor, which is Tradeify. Tradeify is a job management platform for tradespeople. It helps you to manage your workflow from initial customer inquiry right the way through to booking the jobs and sending over the invoice. It saves us a massive amount of time and energy on site. Head to the link in the description where you can get 50% off for your first three months using our special discount code. So just keep a constant pressure. I bet my Super Mario pants are showing. <laughs> I just found out John's secret. He's been hiding it all along underneath his Henry. John is the EICR king. So I'm just gonna get the end stripped off this before I get it into the board. It's so much easier to strip the cable before you put it into the board. And we've actually decided to go into the back of the board rather than in the side because there is a massive hole in the back. Might as well use it clip a linear clip to keep the cable secure so it can't pull out. But tool of the day is this absolute beauty. Unilite have just brought out these knives and they are amazing. This is the UK one. So head to the link in the description where you can get yourself one of these with a fat old discount using our special code. I do I like and love Lillian clips because they they just hurt my hands. Oh. Now you know Artisan Electrics, we love good food and our customer here, amazing. They've just made us some bacon sarnies and delicious coffee 
and we thank all of our beautiful customers who look after us so well. But we also want to thank our channel members and today we've got four new Pringles for Life channel members that I've got to shout out. They are as follows. D Jones Elec, Matty1997, Neil Hibbert, and Steel Automated. All of them have signed up as our Pringles for Life channel members. They get the perk of having a shout out on the channel and some artisan merch. So we thank you for your support. Cheers. We're by for life. There you go. Thank you very much. Who's, oh. who's the fourth one for? Oh, it's for Max. Max is a real person. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Why have they called it HM? It used to be HP. Is it now Her Majesty rather than Houses of Parliament? Let us know in the comments why they changed HP source to HM source. So we had this debate recently in the company because we had some crazy hot weather and all the guys were saying, what's the company policy? Are we allowed to wear shorts or not? Because in our dress code, we have a, a very formal dress code here at Artisan to make sure everyone looks smart. Originally, the rule was no shorts. Also, no bare-chested working, by the way, just for our lady viewers. <laughs> it genuinely was written in my contract that I couldn't take my shirt off at work. <laughs> it says something like, um, under no, uh, under no circumstances are you allowed to take your shirt off even if the customer asks you to or yeah, something like, like that. Bracket something about Corey. <laughs> <laughs> so that was me just putting that in our dress code as a little bit of a joke. But in all seriousness, there is this kind of question mark of is it safe to wear shorts at work or not? You know, what's the balance between the risk of you overheating because it's a super hot day and you're wearing thick trousers versus the risk of you damaging your legs because you're not covering them? So we kind of did some research, thought about it, discussed it as a team, we decided that, okay, you, you can wear shorts if necessary, but it has to be proper work shorts. It can't just be like, you know, casual shorts. And also, if you're wearing shorts, you need to have separate knee pads so that you, when, when you're kneeling down, you still protect your knees. So we kind of came up with a good, good policy. John has gone, you know, the cheapo route and decided to just use a, a dust sheet. So we should probably get him some, <laughs> some knee pads. <laughs> But I did get myself some nice black larder work shorts, but today I just thought I'd wear these proper uh, work trousers. We do wear the black larder trousers most of the time and sometimes um, snickers. I think those are, you're rocking the snickers shorts? I am. These yeah. are really lightweight summer shorts. So yeah, good. pretty nice. Nice boxes as well. Mario, Mario boxes. Heck, how did that happen? No way. No. What? How is that possible? I like measured it off way too long. We've got permission to turn the power off now, so. So the cables here at the board, all, all clipped both ends. I think it's connected at the other end. Just gonna connect it into the RCPO at this end. And then we're pretty much done and we're doing good for time. So I was just about to connect this RCBO and then um, John very cleverly pointed out that they've actually connected the bus bar the wrong way around. This bit here should go out of the main switch. They've just put the thin end out of the main switch. So we've isolated the, uh, the power so it's safe for me to do this. I'm just going to remove this bus bar and I'll show you how it should be. So it was this way, but this larger bit of copper here should actually come out the main switch, so it should be like that. So whoever's done it originally has just not realized that they've connected it the wrong way around. While I've got the bus bar out, it's easier to do that. Pop that in there like that, connect it up. And what I always like to do is use my little uh, inspection mirror just to make sure that all the teeth are in place. So I've got this great little inspection mirror here. I can just go behind and just make sure that the teeth of the bus bar are properly secured within the RCBO. If I start to tighten that up, then we'll see. Do you have that um, torque screwdriver, John? Mate, I'm always one step ahead. Oh, look at that, yeah, brilliant. This set's 2.5. Is that the correct torque for the fuse box? For the bottom, yeah, yeah. yeah it's okay. 1.2 oh, yeah, on the terminal. It says, this is a torque screwdriver, I'll leave a link up here where you can watch my um, unboxing of this on Tools for Sparks channel, 
We've set it to 2.5 newton meters, which is the correct torque setting for these fuse box breakers. And then we just use it to make sure that all the terminals are tightened to the manufacturer's torque settings. And you should only click it once. So you get it finger tight and then one click and you know it's tight enough. In the bucket, yeah? Ah, oh, come on. I, won't, I think if I stood here, that's twice I've missed that way. Mm. Right, it's Ruben's turn. Oh. Come on, please start like that. Oh. <laughs> 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 My wind up is too powerful. We'll just stand here like Oh, come on. Oh wait, I should have played that cool. <laughs> right guys, we've got a bit of a hiccup here. I just can't leave this board like this. It's just doing my OCD in major style. So I'm just gonna, it's quick and easy to do really. I'm just gonna tidy it up as I go. Um, I, just, I just can't stand to leave it like this and we've got a bit of time, so. One of the biggest reasons why this board looks like such a mess is, oh, that wire was not even connected properly, is they've used this really thick earth sleeving we use two mil earth sleeving as standard. They've used four mil, I think. I mean, a lot of Sparkies use three mil and it looks pretty rough, but four mil just looks awful. So I'm gonna swap the earth sleeving for this and you'll see the difference, how much neater it looks just by having thinner earth sleeving. You see that, it just, it's so much easier to get the wires nice and neat when they're like that. So I'm gonna just disconnect them all, number them up, smooth them all out, re-terminate them into the breakers and then, we've got you know, a nice board, because it is it's a good board. You know, We use these fuse box board, but it just needs doing properly and tidily. Oh no. <laughs> what have you done? Oh my God, that was amazing. <laughs> what have you done? Max, if you turned around faster, that would have been so good. We may have been playing some tape basketball, and then the door closed and the bucket fell on Ruben's head. <laughs> Cut to the time lapse. Now's the time, my young Padawan, for you to take your training to the next level. So you've got to warm them up, basically. You can do it with your fingers if you've got gloves. Just yeah. run just run your hands down them like that. Yeah. And you'll find that they get really nice and straight. And then you can get a nice loop on them and they look neat. There's nothing worse than when they've got these little, you know, like little kinks and stuff like that. It just looks horrible. And then I was just saying it to the camera, use two mil sleeving, just get something like this on them and just pull them tight. Yeah. Put a bit of tension on it. Much, much neater. See what John's got in here. I need a pair of side cutters. John, what the heck? Why do you have baby powder in your tool bag? Have you not seen my smooth complexion? Let us know in the comments, what do you think I use this for? Nothing came out. <laughs> okay, so we've just we've just taught Jordan that no if you're on Chrome and oh you have no internet, goodness. it's actually a little game. Oh, yeah, yeah. That is insane. I didn't know that. Oh, I could play this for hours. Right, well, I'm feeling much better about this board now. It is, it's taken a little while, but you know, not too long. And it just looks so much better. So it's neat and tidy now, and we can install our circuit with pride, knowing that the rest of the board looks good as well. Obviously now we've completely blown out our plan of doing a one hour install. And this is the thing, even the most basic of installs, if you want to really go above and beyond and do a great job, you're never going to do it in one hour. I'm just flipping round the cleats on these tails. I know it's like a little bit obsessive now. I'm getting a bit over the top with this, but it's just simple little details like this that can make it look so much neater if you just have the tails next to each other rather than a big gap in between them. We did it! But wait, we forgot something. In order to do a proper, safe and compliant EV install, there are a few things we need to check first. One of the things that we need to check is main equipotential bonding. So under here we got the water bonding and it looks to be in good nick. 
Every installation should have a surge protection device to protect the electric vehicle charging point and associated electronics with the EV. So this install has one already, which is fantastic. If it doesn't, we would include in the price to retrofit a surge protection device. Now we'll go to John, he'll tell you about. Earth Continuity, sorry, R1, R2. Gonna now zero the leads, zeroed. We're gonna test from live to CPC. We've got a reading of 0 0.13. Polarity. So I'm just doing a quick visual test of make sure that the neutral and line conductors are in the right terminals and neutral is, so I'll just terminate the earth and the line. So it's very important that the polarity is correct just because um, if you mix up the line and neutral, it could still work, but obviously that's not ideal and it could be dangerous. Next we do an earth loop impedance test where we test the resistance of the main earth loop all the way back to the DNO's transformer and we want to get a low enough reading that the circuit breaker will trip in the event of a fault. In this case we've got 0.37 and this test also serves as a backup polarity test so we've got good polarity on here and also helps us to start doing the functional tests on the charging point. If the polarity is wrong we'll get this error coming up, live neutral reverse, that indicates that the polarity and is wrong with the live and neutral the wrong way around. RCD testing. Functional testing. All of the readings that we've taken so far we need to fill out on a certificate and we provide electrical and building regulation certificates for the customer. DNO notification. So we need to inform the DNO that we're adding an EV charger to the system. We need to check that it's suitable to have the new load on it. In this case we have put a load limiter on the hypervolt to make sure it can't exceed the 100 amp supply. Now it's time to put all the covers back on, do a final check and clean up, and then we do the customer handover. We have to do the commissioning and customer handover, which is to connect the charging point to the app, instruct the customer on how the charging point works and make sure that they're happy with the entire job, and then, there's one last thing. I forgot to get Ruben to rate my board. That was a very good burger. I would say nine out of 10. But how would you, how would you rate my board from earlier, Ruben? What do you reckon? I think a 2.5 is fairly, fairly fair. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> because I'm trying to remember what it looked like, it's kind of difficult to rate now. I can show you a picture if you want. Go on then. This is before, and this is after, right? Before, after. Swipe left to see the the after. Nah. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> it was swipe right. Away straight away. Well, swipe left, left is that way, isn't it? <laughs> so I was home to. I don't know my left or right. <laughs> Which one's after? No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll give it a, a seven and a half. Okay, I'll take that. Just because of it, a, a lot of it couldn't really be saved. Considering that, that I was polishing somebody else's yeah. proverbial, I think um, seven out of seven and a half, I'll, I'll take that. Two 99 flakes, please. Nice. Nice. So, yeah, oh mate. my goodness. <laughs> Apparently it's six meters below sea level here. Maybe that's why the ice cream melts so quickly. Like that ice cream is Where have you been putting these? I'll just put it here. That is the most melty ice cream I've ever had. So Ruben, how's that ice cream? Very <laughs> good. Well, I think we did pretty well today, guys. We finished early and we do have a two hour drive to get home. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video, dear viewers. If you have, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. But stay on right till the end of this video because we've got a little surprise for you. And why not watch one of the other videos that pops up after this? Either way, thanks for watching and have a great day.
Well then. <laughs> no, this is a violation. <laughs> Mate, it's melting. <laughs> no, this is a violation. How come you guys get to eat ice cream and I don't? 